Hey guys, this is Jesus Quesadilla, and today I'm going to be talking about one of my all-time favorite gaming franchises, The Legend of Zelda. Since the mid-1980s, Zelda has found its way onto over a dozen platforms and into the homes of tens of millions of gamers. The main protagonist, Link, is one of the most iconic characters in Nintendo's history, and throughout his many adventures has revolutionized both 2D and 3D gaming. Today, I hope you'll join me as we explore the greatest of the great, in showcasing what I've evaluated to be the five all-time great Legend of Zelda titles. Keep in mind that this video is based strictly on my opinion, which may differ from yours. After watching the video, if you disagree with my choices, feel free to drop a comment below letting me know what your top 5 list would be instead. Regardless, I hope you'll enjoy. So without further ado, let the countdown get underway. The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening Before tackling the top 5, I'd like to first give a brief mention to this game. Released in 1993, and then later remastered and released again in 1998, The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening encapsulates the wonder of the 2D Zelda experience. While not my favorite game in the Zelda series, I felt it necessary to acknowledge the elements that originated from this game, such as being the first top-down Zelda game to allow fishing, jumping, and playing a musical instrument, which would later be hugely critical in the success of later installments. Recently, this game has been re-released yet again on Nintendo's 3DS handheld, so if you haven't played it yet, you have plenty of opportunity to do so. Anyway, on to number 5. <coughs> the Legend of Zelda, Oracle of Ages, and Legend of Zelda Oracle of Seasons. These games are the spiritual sequels to Link's Awakening, and improve on the original in almost every conceivable way, introducing a plethora of new and exciting gameplay elements such as rings, pets, and as the titles would suggest, control over time and seasons. While alone, these games were great, bridging them together would enable the player to participate in special end-game battles against series mainstays Twinrova and Ganon. While perhaps not the most immediately recognized games in the series, they are, in my opinion, the best handheld Zelda games of all time, netting them the spot in number 5. Now, on to number 4. The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker Wind Waker was a massive departure from previous iterations of 3D Zelda games, abandoning the gritty, more realistic presentations of Majora's Mask and Ocarina of Time. While the option to opt for cell shading left many longtime fans in distress, those who did persevere through their initial reservations were treated to a truly epic experience. While sailing on the high seas may have been tedious to some, there was something undeniably exciting about letting the wind carry you off to desolate isles as you explored the world for the first time, uncovering hidden secrets with every new grid of the map becoming accessible. Honestly, this game would be higher on the list if not for one terribly egregious event in the game, the Triforce of Courage Gathering Quest. It was alright in concept, but horrid in execution, as one of the most ridiculously drawn out and boring quests ever in a video game. It wasn't a side quest either, it was demanded by the story in order to progress to the game's conclusion. It stands as one of the only reasons why I don't play this game more often. That aside, it's still a phenomenal title, probably one of if not the best available on the GameCube. With that said, on to number 3. <laughs> The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. Now please, lower your pitchforks and torches. I wager that this will be one of my more controversial choices, and rightly so. Many gamers consider Ocarina of Time to be the epitome of console gaming. Not just the best Zelda game, but the best game, period. It set the bar for 3D action adventure games with a rich and vast overworld, populated by a colorful cast of characters, and driven by an undeniably grand story. So, why is it only number 3? Well, it's not because there are any particularly outstanding flaws, it's just a testament to the greatness of the next two games on the list. Hear me out, I still play Ocarina of Time to this day, having picked up the remake on the Nintendo 3DS at the title's launch, and having enjoyed it immensely. This game certainly pioneered a new age for the Zelda franchise by establishing what was possible on a 3D plane. 
I just think that people need to take off their nostalgia goggles and realize that, while impressive in its day, and still impressive in the present, it has long since departed from its reign as the supposed, quote-unquote, greatest game of all time. But I digress. On to number two. Huh? The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past This game, in my opinion, is the holy grail of the Super Nintendo. First released in 1991, A Link to the Past redeemed the series for its previous release, Zelda II, which I think of quite fondly as one of the few duds in the Zelda series. A Link to the Past, much like Link's Awakening, was a birthing point for a lot of trademark Zelda associations, such as the Hookshot, Heart Pieces, and most notably, the Master Sword. Now, only if we could get the Pegasus shoes put into a 3D game. That would be pretty epic. A Link to the Past was also the first Zelda game to incorporate the Parallel Worlds motif, which has since become a staple of almost all major Zelda titles. For these reasons, A Link to the Past has earned a place in the hearts of gamers, and the distinction of being one of the greatest games of the Super Nintendo, and of consoles in general. But, even A Link to the Past, and all the previous games on this list, must surrender themselves to our final entry, the number one Zelda game of all time. Zelda, the Wand of Gamelon! Wait, that's not right. Uh... The Legend of Zelda, Majora's Mask! The direct sequel to Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask manages to improve upon the original formula in every conceivable way. While criticized by some for its three-day countdown that forced player progression to be reset after a certain in-game period had passed, I found that the mechanic created a sense of urgency and panic in Termina, which propelled me to spend each three-day cycle as wisely as I could before reverting back to day one. And while light on dungeon exploration, I don't think any Zelda since Majora's Mask has been so densely rich with content. Dozens of challenging minigames, side quests, and collectible masks that give Link new abilities, passage into new territory, and in some cases, transform him into an entirely different species altogether. The occult presence in the game lends itself greatly to the Zelda environment, and in my opinion, the Skull Kid is one of the most compelling antagonists in any video game, with a plight that most players can be sympathetic to while still driving home the fact that Majora's Mask is a force unparalleled in sheer malevolence. Perhaps even more so than Ganon himself. Speaking of which, this game is one of very few to make no reference to Ganon, and only features Zelda in a few sparse flashback cutscenes. An odd departure, but one that I believe ultimately paid off in its attempt to separate itself from the adventures of Ocarina of Time. All in all, Majora's Mask is the manifestation of what an epic adventure game ought to contain, and thus earns itself its place as the number one Zelda of all time on my list. Huh? I hope you all have enjoyed this romp through one of my favorite video game franchises. Once again, these are merely my opinions, and my choices here today may differ greatly from yours. If you'd like to, please feel free to leave a comment below. Let me know how you would rather rate these Zelda games. You can also visit my channel for plenty more video game related content. So, until next time, this has been Jesus Quesadilla, signing out.